Hi everyone, welcome to What's the Point? <laughs> this is the next lesson. We are gonna be learning about point slope form. Therefore, that's the point. And if you take a look here, this is our do now in the warm up. Remember, this is in the packet, the once upon a time packet, a once upon a graph packet. It was uh, copied uh, for you. I copied it for you, just for you guys. Hopefully you picked it up. And if not, that's okay. Um, but it would be helpful if you guys do have that. Um, so if you look right here, number one, and number two, we are going to be writing the linear relationship. Uh, please note, uh, it's just y equals mx plus b. So m being the slope, b being the y-intercept, right? And uh, so when, remember with the slope, we liken that to um, the common difference, right? The thing that keeps on changing every time. So what do we keep on adding or subtracting every single time, right? And so if you look at this one right here, number one, the contestant at the show game already has won a total of $2,750. Uh, when the game show was continued today. So he, he earns an additional $250 for each question he answers correctly today, right? So what is the thing that we keep on adding? The 250, so that's what we label this M. So there we go, 250X plus, our B is what, think of that like the initial, and the initial amount, right? Which is 2750. Uh, basically, what is it when uh, when we don't add 250 to it at all, right? What was its original amount? That's 2,750. There we go, just like that. So, um, and then if you look at this equation right here, or this graph right here, what is the equation of the line? We need two things. We need the slope and the y-intercept. Y-intercept is pretty easy to do. You just look for where the line is, where it crosses the y-axis, which is right here in between, uh, right above the 40. And so if you wanted to kind of figure out where exactly, above the 40. So I like to look at these units and go, okay, so halfway between 40 and 80 is 60. And in halfway between 40 and 60 is 50. And if you look at uh, this, the intersection right there, uh, that looks like it's halfway between, so about 45. So uh, we're calling it B45. And then the slope, you just literally pick any two points and we're gonna figure out how tilted that is. Just like when we're doing our um, arithmetic sequences, we could pick those, any two numbers but they have to be just next to each other and then you would figure out what that difference is. Same thing here, except we they don't have to be next to each other. Um, you could technically go use this point right here. And let's see, uh, this point right here. You can do that. As long as there are two points on the line, you're good. Uh, and then we can see, well, how much does it go down? To get to right here, so we're going down. So each one of these uh, boxes is 10. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So we're going down 60, right? So I would say the way I say going down is negative 60. And then we're going to the right. How much do we go to the right? Well, I go each one of these boxes is worth one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it's gonna be, this is gonna, I should probably put a little dotted line right there so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So we're going to the right 12 or what we say is positive 12. So remember it's a uh, uh, negative 60 over 12, which simplifies down if you want to use your calculator, you can do that. But 60 divided by 12 is five, or technically we should say negative five because that's a negative. So our slope is negative. And if you notice right here, that's what we got. That was the slope was negative five. So for every 60, we go down, we go 12 to the right, right? Uh, we move 12 units to the right. So that's, um, when you simplify that down, that would just be saying like every every five you go down, you go one to the right, five to one, right? And so this right here, the one, once we simplify it down uh, to this negative five, that's like our common difference, okay? So that'd be negative five. All righties, uh, so that would be our equation. Today, we're gonna be learning about uh, the slope formula. This one, we're, you don't have to um, like memorize this, uh this method or you don't have to like you just i just want you to see where it came from okay so we're going to use a slope formula to derive the point slope form uh, of a linear equation and uh we're going to construct an equation in point slope form to model a linear relationship between two quantities and maybe a little bit of writing vertical and horizontal lines if you notice right here so what we did here is we found these two points and we just use a slope formula instead of just uh, visually seeing it. So notice this purple right here is the point, uh, this one right here, which is x is three, 
y is 30, right? That's 30 right there. And this guy right here, I suppose I should make that purple. Let's try that. I'm going to just go like this and make you purple. There we go. And then I'm going to make the other one pink so that it kind of corresponds. So this guy right here, that is 5, 20, right? Because it's 5 on the x and 20 on the, on the y. And that will correspond to this pink right here. See, pinks. And so basically all we're doing the, to find the slope is the difference of y over the difference of x. Uh, or the change of y over change of x. Um, and so when we say the change, remember we're like, just like how we found uh, common differences, we just subtract them, right? We found the difference. So we take the y's. So here my y is 30 minus 20, 30 minus 20, and we got, and we get negative, uh, you get 10. And then three minus five. So three minus five is gonna be negative two. So our slope is gonna be 10 divided by negative two, which is negative five, right? Or, and, and we just flip-flopped it. Well, what if we started the other way? Does that make a difference? No, it doesn't make a difference. If you started with 20 and subtract 30, right? That'll give you negative 10, right? Which is different than what we got because we got positive 10. But remember on the bottom, we get five minus three, which is positive two. So either way, we're still gonna get a negative answer. Okay, so it, it really does not matter which point you start with as long as the points match up like this. So here's my uh, 520 and here's my 330. That sounds like times, but yes. Um, and moving on to the next page. So here we got, we got two pools going on. First pool uh, said the water level is 14 feet and drains at a rate of three feet per hour. So if you notice, this is my pool and a label it just in case, cause there was some debate about what the, this, what this looked like. So they're like, is that a cake? <laughs> oh, no. um, and so again, the water level is at 14 feet. Remember water is getting drained out either down here or up here, whichever, it doesn't matter. But we do know it's uh, going down at a rate of three feet per hour. So it is either a very big pool or very slow draining. I don't know. So three feet per hour. And uh, so here we just wrote it just like this. So we know that the rate of, uh, whenever you see rate, you're thinking, oh, that's gotta be like the slope. Rate is your common difference. So this is our M right here and our four feet. That's what we're starting out with, right? So uh, that's gonna be our B or our Y-intercept, okay? And so this is our, that's what that is. That's the equation. So again, if you did not do any of this part in the, uh, from, or you just found your packet and you're gonna do it now, I would do this first and then uh, press play, okay? Here's the second one for B, Bayside Diving Pool. So this one is a little bit different because they give us different kinds of information, all right? So it says uh, the water level is at 15 feet after being drained for two hours, right? So here's 15 feet and that's after two hours. So it wasn't originally at 15 feet. So where was it before? Well, we'll find out. So, and then we know another at another instance. So after four hours of draining, uh, not for more hours of drain, just four altogether hours of draining, uh, it's at a height of 12 feet, okay? Or a depth, whichever one you want to call it. So it's only, it's 12 feet. So this is really, really, really deep, which makes sense because this is a diving pool, right? Um, so if you notice right here, so if, if you notice that time difference, that's a that's a two hour difference. So what, what happened within those two hours? How much did it go down? It went down to, not to three feet, right? So it went from, it went from 15 to 12, right? So we're, we're thinking, okay, I know we're decreasing, so we should have a negative slope. Or they remember like a negative common difference, right? Because we're going lower. So this is what we got. Our slope is negative three feet over two hours because it's, uh, every three feet, we're, it takes us two hours to do that, right? If you want to put in decimals because we are like, well, what about for one hour? And it's like, then you just divide that. So it's uh, one point, it goes down one, one and a half feet for every hour, right? But we can just leave it as negative three over two, that's fine. And normally for slope, we don't put in the, um, the units for that. Uh, so that's our negative three halves. And then what was it before? So then let's just go two before. So if we go back two hours, right back in time, so that's gonna increase three feet, right? So that's how we got the initial of three feet like that. So we kind of had to think about it. So that was our plus 18, all right? So um, uh, there's another more systematic way of doing this using the slope formula. I'm not gonna do that right now because this I like this way of thinking, okay? As long as it makes sense, Math should make sense, and if it doesn't, 
have to think about it a different way. All right, um, so we're going down to here. So this is where we're gonna learn about the point slope form and this is where they get that from. So if you look on the left-hand side, it tells you like the directions. So I would always uh, try and look at these work examples anytime you're at home and you, you need to study something, you need to try something out. Okay, so here uh, we have this table of values right here. So two, six, four, five, and six, four, right? And we wanna know what is the line that goes through that? What is the equation of the line? And um, so it says first calculate the slope because that's what we need. We need to usually find the slope. How much is it tilted, right? And so we can use any um, any points, any two points for this, but we just need to have two points. They, they excuse me, they just decided to use uh, the first two points and that's fine. So they just said, remember it's the difference of y's. So we went from six minus five, so six minus five over two minus four. Okay, two minus four. Um, if we were to do this with common differences, remember, uh, we would just go, remember it's five minus six, which is negative one, which makes sense because it's going down by one every time. Well, normally this would be going down by one as well. So it'd always be over one, but unfortunately this is not going down by ones. What is it? It's not or going up by ones. This is actually going up by two, right? So this is going up by two right here, right? So this is going down by one. So if you, uh, so this, uh, again, we can find slope this way too. So this is the exact same thing here, except this is more algebraic, right? And what is that difference? It's gonna be negative one. So slope is equal to negative one over plus two, which is just negative one half. And if you notice right here, that's exactly what they got as well, negative one half. Um, their negative was on the bottom at first, uh, but, uh, but again, it doesn't make a difference. It's uh, still gonna be a negative slope, right? So basically what we're saying is for every one we go down on Y, we're going to go to the right, two, two, all right? Okay, so now we got the slope, done. So it says next, choose any point from the table. So they chose two, six. For us, we had chosen six, four, all right? Just to try and see if it works, all right? And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna substitute in uh, whatever we know from the from the slope formula. So we know the slope m is negative one half because we just calculated that out. I try to make the colors the same. We do know the point two six. We're going to put the six with the y and the two with the x, right? Because this is x and this is y. And then we we're like, okay, we don't know y and x, so we're just going to leave it like that, which is fine. And then it says right here. Finally, rewrite the equation with no variables in the denominator. Now, if you notice right here, we have the x minus two in the denominator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both sides by x minus two. And so that would cancel out that denominator. And we have now x minus two multiplying here on the left and just the y minus six here. So what we end up with is uh, negative one half times x minus two is equal to y minus six. This is actually, so I'm just gonna, what they did was they just flip flopped it. Since it's equal, you can just flip flop them. So they put the y minus six on the left and the other stuff here on the right. And so this is in point slope form. This is how we get point slope form. This is basically the slope formula cut up into two, all right? So if you have your books, uh, I would write this down. The, so the point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, right? The reason why we have the ones is to show that that one is the point, is that is one point. Right, and then X is just a variable and Y is just a variable, All right? So that's right here. If you don't have your book, I would copy that down. I would write it down in your notes somewhere. And it says right here, defines it for you, where M is a slope, which we know, and X1, Y1 is any point on the line. And we're like, any point? Like any point? But wouldn't that be different numbers? And so right here, we just chose this one. We're like, okay, so this is our X and this is our Y. So it's y minus y1, which is our four. And uh, the slope should be the same, right? Negative one half and the x minus x1, which is six, right? So if I were to graph this, so, and so we're like, okay, so we're literally saying that, oh, I should probably use a different way. Right? This equation right here is the exact same thing as this equation. Even though the numbers are different, I'm saying that they're the same. You're like, what, are you sure about that? <laughs> So we'll go on decimals. All right. Um, so we'll X out of these guys. That was for a different class.
and oh, I probably also need the equations as I keep on flipping back and forth on these. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Well, let's put this one in first. So y minus, oh, actually we should put in the points. Let's just make sure. So we're saying that we want a line that goes through this point, see the purple point, and then a four or five, this point, and six, four, this point. Okay, do you see those three points? We want a, the line to go through those three points. All right, so here is our first equation right here. So it's y minus, oop, not seven, minus, y minus, I'll get there, y minus six is equal to negative one half, oop, one half. I'm gonna get out of that uh, parentheses, x minus two. Do you see that? Do you see how it goes through the, the, those three points? I know, cool. And so now I'm saying that this, or they're saying maybe that this is the exact same thing as this, as the blue line. Let's find out. Even though they're different numbers, we're saying that that is still a thing. So y minus four is equal to uh, negative one half. Nope, that's not it. Okay, so far that's not looking promising, but we have this minus six. What? Okay, do you see how that goes right through? So literally any point on this line, we could substitute this x and x1, y1 with any point on this line, and it will give us this exact same equation or exact same graph, right? See, green, blue. Yeah, that's, that's the cool thing about it. And that's why I like point-slope form, because you just need to know a point, any point on the line, and its slope, which means how many different kinds of equations can you make from it? Lots. There are lots of different right answers. but. Um, yeah, it'll be all representing the exact same line. That was weird, but it's true. So here's some practice. Um, uh, we got a slope of negative one, negative eight. The point 312 lies on the line. So here we go. So again, y minus, remember the y part, which is 12, is equal to negative eight, which is a slope, times x minus three, which was the y part, the x part. Remember the X's go together and the Y's go together. There we go, done. I know, right? That's it. <laughs> so do the same thing for number five. Number five, try it out. It's, this is what you should get. Okay, what I would do is I would like, like cover that up, try it by myself and then see if I get what, what, the, what the answer says. That's what I would do. And then for number four, notice, okay, we have two points. What do we do? First thing, because remember it's this point slope form, which means we need to, point, which we have two of, so it doesn't matter which one we use. Um, and then we have the slope. So we're going to have to decide uh, which point we're going to use, but we do need to have the, um, what is it called? The slope. We need the slope. So let's go. So m is equal to, uh, which one do you want to start with? Should we start here? So this is like y, so 5, so I like to go like this, five, 956 minus 836, because I'm going in this direction right here. So I'm going to subtract my x's. So it's going to be 429 minus 249. Okay, I don't need these numbers. So we're going to have to figure that out if you're ready. So 956 minus 836, which is going to be 120 over, 429 minus 249. Well, this is the same numbers, but mixed around. So that's going to be 180. So we're going to simplify that. So one, uh, we're going to 120 divided by 180. Oop, two thirds. There you go. Uh, keep them because if you notice, if you put that on your calculator, you get 0. 0.66666, like six bar, right? Uh, please recognize that that's two thirds. If you have um, a thing where it simplifies it to a fraction, that works too. Um, if you go here on Desmos, you can actually, it doesn't matter. If you go like two divided by three, you're like, oh, see, 0. 0.6666. Uh, so this is gonna be, so if you look at this fraction bar, you just click on that. Uh, oh wait, that's not helpful. I should have said 120 divided by 180 is what I should have said. And, um, before it would have been like this. And then you click on the fraction thing and we're like, what? 
simplifies it for you. All right. So there we go. That's another another hack. <laughs> all right. So we have our our slope. So all we need to do is write in slope intercept form. Here we go. So y minus, I'm gonna use this first point right here. So that'll be the y is the 956 equals two thirds times x minus uh, 429. You could have also written uh, y minus, now we're using this one, so 836 equals two thirds times x minus 245 or 249. Oops, my bad. So yeah, either one of those two is correct. So if I ask you for the point slope form, there's a lot of different right answers. So easy for you, hard for me to correct because I have to make sure that it's all the right points. Sad days. <laughs> all right. Um, more practice here. Uh, the cost to ship a package in the mail includes a basic shipping cost plus an additional cost per number of pounds uh, a package weighs. A three pound package costs $6.30, a 10 pound package costs $14. To $14. Okay, I like to make a little table here. So we're like, okay, well, uh, three pounds. So three pounds costs 6.30 and a 10 pounds costs 14. All right, well, what's the difference here? I'm going up for sure, right? So how much am I going up by? I'm going up by 14 minus. Oop, probably better if I uh, write that in right. $7.70. So I'm going up by $7.70. But is it for one pound? No, I'm going up by actually seven pounds, right? So it went from, from three pounds to seven pounds. So what's my slope? 770 divided by seven, which is going to be 1.1, so a dollar and 10 cents. So this is like a dollar and 10 cents for per pound. So I'm gonna say a dollar 10, my dollar per pound. And I don't know why pound is uh, LB, that's LB by the way. Uh, but it is. All right, so uh, that's my slope. So M is equal to 1.1. If you want to put 1.10, so for 1.10, that's fine. But 1.1 is the same thing. So what did it used to cost before? Well, we can kind of think about that. So if we if we want to extend this, let's just increase that just a little bit. We're going to kind of think about this. So 210. So like a pound before that, how much would it be? Well, let's just subtract 1.1, right? So that would be 5.2, right? Because remember the common difference, right? Because now we're going just by ones. And then uh, before that, that would just be 5.2 minus 1.1 is 4.1. And before that, that would be 3.0. So base cost, Cost not if it weighs nothing, three bucks. Okay, so that's going to be the base cost, or so that's going to be our B, which is three. All right, our B, which is three. All right, so um, we're going to write that out. So that's going to be, watch my mouth, y is equal to 1.1x plus three. All right, again, there is a more mathematical way or an algebraic way of solving for that using the slope formula. You can totally do it that way. Um, they do that up above where we kind of skipped it. Um, do you have to do it that way? No, not right now. But this is this is another way to get that. It's like more of a conceptual way of understanding what that what it all means. All right, moving on here. Um, we're this is the same kind of concept that we talked about before. We are going to go now to the talk the talk. Oh, but I will say number nine, something important. So if you know the slope and the y-intercept, which form should you use? If you said, oh, the slope-intercept form. And I'd be like, well, why would you use that? And you'd be like, oh, because it has a slope and the y-intercept. That's all we need, so there we go. Uh, could you put it in point-slope form? Yeah, because the y-intercept is a point. 
but why not just put it in slope intercept form? Right, two points. Um, it's up to you. You could either put it in slope intercept form or you can put it in point slope form. Up to you. But this one always has that additional step of you need to find the slope. This is not given to you. All right. Um, so uh, I, for me, I'll say point slope form because the only thing you need to find is the point. If I can write point. Um, the, if you don't use, uh, if you want to go into the slope intercept form, you would have to take the additional step of finding out what the y intercept is which you'd have to do algebraically. And then uh, right here, what if you have a slope and a point other than the y-intercept? What should you use? And if you said, oh, Miss Lee, point slope form, because we have a point that's on the line and the slope. There we go. That's why they call it the point slope form. All right, we're actually gonna move on here. We're not gonna do this. I know we talked about horizontals, I'm sorry. Uh, just know as a very, big quick thing. Um, I'm gonna make two graphs there. If it is horizontal, like this is crossing here at three, right? Then it's just y is equal to three. Because why? Because y is equal to three all, every single time. It does not fluctuate from that. If it is like this and it crosses here at two, then this is just, well, it's not y. What's always constant? X, which is x equals to two because x is always equal to two. It does not matter what y is. X will always equal to two. Well, we're like, well, what about y equals 10? Well, x is two. Well, what about y is equal to negative four? X is two. See what I'm saying? It's always two, right? Wherever the line is, that's what, it's, what, that's what x is gonna equal to. That's for horizontal and vertical lines. All right, so we were just going to identify which one is which. Uh, and in class, we talked about a being the slope intercept form. So I made that pink and in, in green is the point slope form. Right? And what does it tell you, us? The slope and the point that's on the line. Same thing with this one. This is the slope and the y-intercept. Uh, let's see here. What in the world is this? What information can you determine? Just by looking at this, you're like, well, this kind of looks like the slope intercept form, except we have this plus four here. If only we could get it to the other side. I think I can do that. We can just subtract four on both sides. Does it get y is equal to 2x minus four? Notice I am not adding those together or subtracting them together because I can't, because they're not like terms. One has an x, the other one doesn't. Doesn't mix. So, he, oh, now look at it. Slope intercept form, right? What's my slope? Two. What's my y intercept? Negative four. Um, right here. What is this one? Hmm. Kind of looks like this slope intercept form, except it doesn't have a plus b. Oh, but it does, right? Because notice here, if there's nothing there, there's actually a plus zero. So what's my y-intercept? Zero. And let me just show you. So I think it will be beneficial if I showed you. So let me just X all these out. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, there we go. So for example, this right here, a y uh, plus four equals two x. There we go. Notice right here, y-intercept is at negative four, which is what we said it was gonna be. And our slope is, okay, we're gonna go up four and then to the right two. So there's just four over two, which is two, right? And then same thing with this one, if it's uh, negative two, negative two divided by seven, x, oops, x. There we go. I'm gonna erase that. So notice right here, where does it cross? Right here at zero. Just like I said, the y intercept was zero, right? And two seven. So we're gonna go and notice, do you see how it goes down? So it's decreasing, which is what we thought because it's negative, right? And then um, and then we are going to uh, do this one right here. So remember it should go through the point um, negative oh, four, negative five. Why do I say negative five? Because um, this should have been a minus. Remember, we're supposed to be always be a minus, but it's not. Why is it not? Because it was a minus a negative, right? So that is actually a negative five. So we go y plus five equals negative x minus four. And if you notice right here, so it should go through the point four, negative five. So let's go a little bit closer. So here's four, negative five. 
what? Right there, four negative five. Because if we went to four positive five, four positive five is over here. And notice there's no point. See, I told you I was right. <laughs> and our slope right here, if that's just a negative, what does that mean, right? That just means it's a negative one, right? So we're gonna go up one and to the left one or down one, because it's decreasing, right? Down one and then to the right one, which down one to the right one, yep, we're still on the line. Just like that. And y is equal to 19. Is that going to look like this or like this? Which one? You tell me. We'll find out. So remember, where does y always equal 19? Where does it equal 19? You see that up there in the green? That's where y is equal to 19. Oh. Yeah, this, this is something else. So yeah, and, and I, I don't think, I don't know if this will do it. Let's find out. Y equals, oop, it does, yay. Sometimes I'm like, it's not a function, so I don't know. All right, there we go, right here. So X is equal to five, just like that. Because that's where X is always equal to five. All right, so I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.